Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he said ma ana alayhi wa ashabi so the sahaba companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did did not write books they did not compile books they did not give as lengthy lectures as we are used today they had their own circles of circles of teaching every sahabi has a circle in which many people gathered around him and he used to narrate what he has learned from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then when after the sahaba those who learned the, this knowledge from sahaba he had also a similar circle of people later on who are called tabi'in then came tabi'u tabi'u tabi'in and in this way the knowledge of sharia is transferred from generation to generation this is the traditional way of learning what sharia is the point i want to make is that knowledge the word knowledge within within uh, you know inverted commas if you are if you stick to its literal meaning knowledge so knowledge may be of anything knowledge of anything this is a bottle of water i know that this is a bottle of water this is also a knowledge if i know that this masjid is built of is of uh, you know some material that is also a knowledge so knowledge in itself means to know something but in order to know something there are two different ways there are two different ways to achieve or to acquire knowledge one one way to acquire knowledge is what uh, what you may call it self study you have lot of books in a bookshop you choose a book from there that speaks about islam for example and you read it on your own study it you know study it in your study study room without consulting any teacher or professor just read it and if you read a lot of books on the very subject of islam you may acquire knowledge but that knowledge is in the sense of knowing something but it cannot give you expertise you it cannot give you skill to really understand what is behind these books what is the real meaning of these books you cannot you cannot achieve uh, you cannot achieve a, a status in which you may be called a knowledgeable person in that that particular subject this is not restricted to islam or islamic sharia to the quran or sunna only in every field of knowledge in every field of skills you cannot become a person a knowledgeable person a reliable person merely by studying the books of that particular subject alone without guidance from a professor or a lecturer or a, a ustaz or a sheikh so much so that i used to say that today there are many books that is plain how to cook meals cook cook books they explain how to you can make a biryani how can you make a korma how can you can make a kebab but if you have not taken any training from a real chef or real cook and you just read the book and the book explain to you the all the ingredients 
of kebab for example you know and it explains to you how to make kebab but if only by studying that book if you try to make kebab i don't know what kind of kebab you will make <laughs> whether it will be eatable or not eatable so unless you have a, a proper training from someone who has experience you cannot make kebab nor you cannot can you make biryani or korma or any any other meal so if this is true in cooking meals likewise if you for example study medical science books and medic uh, study properly with the help of dictionaries and uh, there are dictionaries there are medical dictionaries there are uh, books that explain everything but you study it on your own self without referring to a particular doctor or experienced person you have acquired knowledge but if you try to treat the people on the basis of that knowledge you cannot serve the people except to uh, increase the population of graveyards <laughs> because this medical science is cannot be acquired merely by studying the books so we believe this principle to be true in every every field of knowledge but but when it comes to islam when it comes to sharia then every people has his own opinion every person has his own opinion they say that we have studied the translation of the holy quran we have studied the, the translation of ahadith we have compared between different opinions of the fuqaha abu hanifa shafi malik ahmad ibn hanbal and now that we have studied all these things we have our own opinion and therefore every person sometimes believes him to be a mujtahid and every person say that i think this is not true i think this is halal i think this is haram this should not be halal should not be haram so this kind of knowledge cannot serve any field of islamic life of uh, human life so it is very strange that we believe this principle to be true in all spheres of knowledge except islam and sharia so what i was trying to uh, the the point i i was trying to make is that the ulama of deoband or ulama of subcontinent of india the uh, in reality they were true representatives of this traditional learning that has reached us through proper channel right from the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam up to our day and allah subhanahu wa taala has a sunnah that he gives the proper knowledge through you know through uh, this proper channel by which sahaba radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu ajma'in learned islam and islamic sharia so we are referring to these scholars because their knowledge was not based on their self study it was based on the traditional way of learning about islam about the holy quran and sunnah of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam